Justine Ella. The ITF created the Philippe Chatrier Award in 1996 to honor substantial contributions to the sport of tennis. It's very emotional, of course. I dedicated almost my, my whole life to, to tennis, and we don't do this for the awards or for this kind of honor, but still, when it comes, especially after the career, during the career, you get the awards, and we don't really realize what it means because we are in our bubble as tennis players. Having the opportunity to be in front of all these people, a lot of people I didn't see for a long time that have been part of my life during so many years. It's fantastic to look back, uh, fantastic to think about all these moments, the good moments, the bad moments, the, the people I've met and uh, everything I learned on myself. I couldn't expect, to be honest, um, that it would be so, so emotional, so very happy about it. What I'm the, maybe the proudest of is the stability I got into my team, also working with the same coach, Carlos Rodriguez, since I was 14 until the end of my career. And also, I was one of the smallest uh, girls on, on two, and uh, the fact that I wasn't so tall, so strong, and when I was younger, I took that really as a big motivation also to prove that what you see sometimes, it's not, you know, it's not the end, it's not fatality. It's, you can do something with that. I could use my strengths, my qualities, different kind of qualities. You can be a bit different and still succeed or be powerful in another way. I'm so grateful about all the, the players I, I had to face and some of them gave me a lot of trouble, that's for sure. It's been yeah, fantastic to, to live some kind of rivalries and sometimes it's hard, of course, but it pushes you to get better all the time. And of course, Serena has been probably the biggest challenge. Sometimes she, she could play really, really, really far from her best level, not playing good tennis at all, but at the end, she was always finding a solution. You need that mix of ego and humility at the same time. So she could accept that she wasn't playing well, but in another way she didn't accept that and always find really the reaction like the biggest champions that we, we've met in, uh, in the history of the, of the game. She made me work so hard and I'm really grateful for, for this. I'm happy I could be one of the, of the players who could be really creative on, on the court and I think that it helped me a lot also in the style of game that I developed uh, in, during my career. Everyone uh, calls her the female Federer and when you see her play shots like this it uh, really does feel true. Carlos helped me a lot with my self-confidence because I was quite a an anxious kid, uh, not so confident, but the tennis court was the place where I could express myself, where I could feel also a bit more secure. I met him at a time that uh, it was tough after, after I lost my mom, and a year and a half later I meet him, and he said to me, if you want to become number one, if you want to reach that goal, I believe you have the potential and I want to do it with, uh, with you. When I created the Academy, we wanted to keep a common project with, with Carlos. We keep working together, and he's the director of my Academy. It's 15 years now, and uh, really for me, in my philosophy, it was, of course, the high-performance program with players that want to become professional. Spin. Very good. But also, I really paid more attention year after year to the kids who just come to play tennis to have fun, to uh, learn about themselves on, on tennis, to be in a, in a family environment and uh, just being together. One. Academy is for everyone and for me it's really important uh, that it's a possibility to develop ourselves. No matter what is your level and no matter what is your, is your goal. And this is our biggest satisfaction to see them growing up and being more responsible for themselves, it's really, really our goal.